CTV's W5. We got it whether we wanted it or not. There was no choice. Abandoned wells set the stage for a possible ecological disaster. I worry about the safety of it. We don't know if these things are leaking. I'm trying to raise the red flag and everybody goes, don't worry about it. They really don't have a handle on any of this. And it's something that never even came to my mind. Ignorance fuels an epidemic of racism. Where do we get our Wuhan communist virus? From China. The virus is not restricted to any particular race, region, or community. We know that we have a long road ahead of us. CTV's W5 with Avery Haynes. Welcome to W5. In Alberta, it's hard to drive along the countryside without spotting an oil well. And yet almost half of them aren't doing anything at all. They are sitting idle. Molly Thomas investigates the financial and environmental mess that big oil companies have left behind. In the land of big blue skies and rustic country pastures, there's a long and frustrating road for landowners like Dwight Popovich. We journeyed past 25 acres of forest outside Two Hills, Alberta, to find his majestic area of farmland. But in the middle of the beauty, there's an eyesore and Dwight's giant industrial headache. This is it. This is it. This is what a non-producing well looks like. It's bigger than I thought. Recently retired, Dwight wants to sell his property, but everything is on hold thanks to this crumbling gas well. This looks like it's falling apart. Get pieces of insulation blowing off, and you can see it, it gets caught up in the bush here. I'm always having to pick up pieces all the time broken windows. The siding is like... Yes, and all that and the tanks are to deteriorate. Oil and gas companies are supposed to clean up their old wells, but many are skirting their responsibilities, leaving homeowners like Dwight on the hook. And uh, I worry about the safety of it. We don't know if these things are leaking. There's nobody coming around to make sure that they're all right. And uh, basically all they did is turn off the valve, throw on a padlock and walked away from these things. Depending on the level of contamination, cleaning up just one well can cost anywhere from $50,000 to several million, and the process can take years. Dwight says the well on his land is driving down his selling price by $75,000. He'd have to crack his retirement nest egg to clean it up himself. So where does that leave you, Dwight? People who want to buy this place suddenly say, well, why do I want to have to deal with that, okay? So they're offering lower market values as a result. Many of these banks are not going to mortgage anybody who might want to buy it. Why, again, as a landowner, am I having to deal with this? Albertans are in a tough spot because most wells in this province are on private land. Back in boom times, eager oil companies could drill almost anywhere because landowners only own what's above ground. What lies beneath belongs to the province. In return, companies are supposed to pay residents rent for using their land, even if the well is not producing. But that doesn't always happen. Dwight believes his oil company left him high and dry. Give us back our land so I can get on with my life. Dwight's not alone. There are 97,000 inactive wells in Alberta, meaning they are uneconomical or non-producing holes in the ground, like these wells sitting side by side. One built in 1955, has been taken apart, and the other seems to be intact but not functioning. They're clearly changing the land around them. By law, oil companies are obligated to clean these up at some point, but there are no deadlines. The Alberta government estimates it will cost $18.5 billion to do so across the province, but an independent study found it may be closer to $70 billion. The problem in Alberta is that we've had no mandatory requirement, no legislation, no policy uh, requiring that wells be cleaned up in any timely manner. Lawyer Keith Wilson has been raising alarm bells for 25 years. He blames companies for punting their cleanup responsibilities down the road. 
every other jurisdiction in North America, except for Alberta and Saskatchewan, thought that it was a good idea to put timelines in. And it's not just wells that are sitting there for a couple years. We're talking about decades. There are many wells uh, on the landscape in Alberta that are not sealed, are not reclaimed, were drilled in the 50s and 60s, never produced, and they're still sitting there to this day. Some wells from that drilling era were cleaned up by oil companies, like the two on the Doran family farm in Didsbury, Alberta. So Mark, this site, I mean, it's right behind your house. Yes, it's, it's adjacent to the yard and to the barnyard as well. Mark Doran showed us old pictures of where a pump jack and tank used to be. His 88-year-old mother, Shirley, will never forget the day the landman showed up at her door. He treated us like we were children, and he offered us, I think it was $1,000 an acre. We didn't want the oil well, but we, we got it whether we wanted it or not. There was no choice. Today, both sites have been given official reclamation certificates, and that should have been enough. But when the Dorns went to borrow money to develop their land, the bank also demanded an independent environmental assessment at the family's own expense. So Mark, what's at stake for your family? The value of their land's at stake. My parents have clear title to this land. Can't, it's worth multi-millions if the oil and gas well wasn't here. It's rendered literally worthless. They can't even borrow one penny against it because there's a well site there. They've tried. They've tried, and we were turned down. As long as there's a well site on this quarter section, the bank will not accept it as collateral. And so his parents, Herman and Shirley's retirement is not what they hoped for. We spent a lot of money just trying to be able to present our case. And to this day, we don't go out for a dinner somewhere to a restaurant or anything because we have to watch our money. And yet we're sitting on this lovely piece of property. Do you feel, Shirley, like you've been taken advantage of? Yes, I'd say that. You sort of feel you live in Alberta. And I always thought that's where you got a square deal, but I find out that it isn't the case. Dwight, 370 kilometers away, is also angry his square deal has soured. He's frustrated with the oil company that left a well on his property and the province that let it happen. Why am I having to deal now, filling out applications, trying to get information, trying to get somebody to look after this well, because nobody's looking after it now. It's sitting in limbo. Dwight, do you feel used? Very used. Now, like most Albertans, we thought everything is fine in the patch. Our government, our regulator is looking after everything. They've got a good handle on this. Well, it didn't take me long to figure out that that is not what is going on. They really don't have a handle on any of this. What's worse is that the well sitting on Dwight's land belongs to a company that no longer exists. In the last few years, more than 20 oil and gas companies have declared bankruptcy in Alberta, including Sequoia, which last owned Dwight's well. In 2016, Sequoia, a small Chinese-backed company, bought thousands of wells from a larger Canadian firm for just $1. But two years later, they were drowning in environmental cleanup costs and went bankrupt. The validity of this sale is currently before the courts. Land rights lawyer Keith Wilson says several small companies have folded in recent years. The list is long. They were allowed by the regulator to take over these liabilities, and that has exacerbated the problem. Wilson worries about larger companies selling to smaller ones and what that means for cleanup. These bigger companies, they're like, oh, wait a minute. We can package up five or six Goodwells in with 200 duds right, non-producing wells that are just liabilities, and hand them off to a smaller company, remove ourselves, extract ourselves from that liability, uh, and whatever happens, happens. The Alberta Energy Regulator is the enforcer of provincial rules. It's supposed to protect the public and the environment. It says it doesn't have the authority to approve company takeovers, but it can revoke or restrict licenses if it deems the new company poses an unreasonable risk. But this former Alberta Energy Regulator employee says that rarely happens. He asked to remain anonymous for fear of putting his family and livelihood at risk. He spent years with the organization and claims the regulator often turns a blind eye to these kinds of transactions. It was drill, drill, produce, produce. 
oil is at this price, let's get as much money as we can. Did you warn the regulator when you worked there? Were you warning them that this was going to happen? I'm trying to raise the red flag, and everybody goes, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And this could have been avoided. Just do the right thing. Why are you speaking out right now? Because it's, it's gotten to the point where our province is on the cusp of a industrial disaster. Coming up. There's no company to hold accountable to cleaning up the sites. A small town fights for survival. Our community essentially could die. When W5 continues. In Alberta, farmland is abundant. And so are oil wells. Tens of thousands now sit idle on private land. Mark Dorn, who spent seven years trying to navigate Alberta's regulatory system, has become a land crusader of sorts to help others understand their rights. So we head out on the road with him to visit a farmer's site with a neglected well and discover this, what Mark believes is a potentially dangerous gas leak close to where the farmer grows his crops. It's difficult to see the haze on camera, but you can't miss the rotten egg smell. This inactive well was drilled 70 years ago and has been idle for the last five. Even birds have made a home here. I have uh, an incident I'd like to report, please. Mark called the Alberta Energy Regulator immediately to report the leak. What's the report? So it's, uh, it's a well site. It's, uh, there's a sour gas uh, surface casing vent flow here. Is there any evacuations? No, no, there's no evacuations required. It's just a relatively low volume vent of natural gas with hydrogen sulfide in it. It's called a surface casing vent flow. Will you be able to stop the venting? Uh, I'm not going to stop it. I can't stop it. It's a troubling find for Mark, but one he admits is not rare with these aging wells. How often do you see things like that? I, I mean, I see thousands of minor non-compliances that aren't uh, urgent that I do not call in. If they're my clients, I, I file formal requests for some sort of a remedy, which almost never get dealt with. So I only call something like that in if it's sour gas or something like that. The next day, Mark received an email from the regulator stating, an AER inspector found a non-serious leak with no off-lease odors, meaning no sour gas, but that's a troubling conclusion for Mark, who says he's certain about that smell. And you believe it was sour gas? There's no question about it. I spent 40 years in, in the oil field. The gas smell was so strong, it gave our W5 crew a headache. So we asked the Alberta Energy Regulator for further clarification. The organization maintains there was no sour gas leak and suggests the rotten egg smell could be from decomposing manure or wetlands. To date, the government of Alberta has never comprehensively looked at how many inactive wells are leaking. But in 2015, researchers in neighboring BC found almost 30% of all these wells were leaking methane and other potent greenhouse gases. It's not just farmers and ranchers demanding that oil companies clean up their mess, it's entire towns. Kalmar, a small rural community just south of Edmonton, is facing a goliath of old wells, hundreds of feet underground. This is 130 acres okay. of prime highway commercial and industrial land that we cannot develop. Michelle Lavasseur is Kalmar's economic development officer, trying to keep this community alive. Right, so there's a total of six wells on this site. Three of them have been remediated and there's three that are still unknown. So, Developers aren't willing to take a gamble? They won't take a gamble. There's just too many unknowns. Unknowns, like how much it will cost to clean up each well pit. This one is underwater now, and no one really knows what the level of contamination may be. And that could range anywhere from $30,000 to do a simple remediation project to millions. And this is only one site. The town of Kalmar actually has 25 abandoned well sites in our community. So if you see the kind of pink box, that's our community. All the yellow um, marks are abandoned well sites in Kalmar and surrounding Kalmar. Every single yellow dot? Yes. Wow. Yeah. 
So that's land that we now cannot develop and generate tax revenue from. 75% of these wells within our community are deemed the legacy wells, which means there's no company to hold accountable to remediating and cleaning up the sites. What does that mean for a small town like Kalmar? If I'm unable to help this community grow by creating jobs and development, then our community essentially could die. We could, this could be it for us. That's a viable fear at this point, that Kalmar could not exist if this problem is not dealt with. Yes. Kalmar has been asking the province for help, but to date, there have been no commitments. So with a tax base of only 866 households, Michelle says even getting one environmental assessment is not affordable, let alone the 25 they need. A 1% tax increase equates to about $21,000. If I want to do a phase one environmental site assessment, that's 1% tax increase for my residents. That just is for just, one well? For one well that is not fiscally responsible for our council or our administration to ask our current residents to fund the sins of the fathers. <laughs> but a small number of sins are being reconciled by the oil industry through the Orphan Well Association. Created by government, the regulator and industry, oil companies pay an annual levy for giant rigs like this and specialized crews to clean up wells called orphans left behind by bankrupt companies. It's a massive amount of work. Pipes must be removed, equipment torn down, the hole sealed and the surrounding soil restored. Loans from provincial and federal governments also fund this work. Only a thousand wells have been cleaned up so far. Another 6,000 are at various stages of cleanup. Lars Depa is the executive director of the Orphan Well Association. Orphan Wells, of course, are all over Alberta. Can your organization keep up with demand? Yeah, I mean, um, we, we've, we've been fortunate to get uh, two loans from the provincial government and one from the federal government. So it's totaling close to half a billion dollars. How much are companies putting in? To date, the oil and gas industry in Alberta has contributed nearly $440 million to deal with problems such as this. Do we have a time frame for how long it'll take to get all of those wells cleaned up? Um, we don't have a direct time frame, um, you know, with the budgets that we have right now. But their cleanup work only focuses on bankrupt wells, those so-called orphans. That's the smallest pool of non-functioning wells. The bigger problem, 97,000 inactive wells that could become orphans as companies struggle with the low price of oil. Land rights lawyer Keith Wilson says these are the ticking time bomb. But I continue to be more concerned about the inactive wells with companies that are either operating or marginally operating. Do you think, Keith, that this will ever be fixed? There's only three people that could potentially clean this up. The oil company, the taxpayer, or the farmer. It feels like the oil companies have been able to dine and dash. That's exactly what's happened. We've had a dine and dash situation. Brad Harold is a vice president at the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers. I look at the inactive wells in this province, you know, closer to 100,000. Isn't that the real problem that, that's lying ahead? You know, we look at that and say, okay, you know, there's some risk there. A lot of those wells became uneconomic more rapidly than we thought because the prices dropped. There's responsible operators that sit behind that inventory and the right steps are being taken to make sure that they don't materialize as orphan wells in Alberta. When it comes to inactive wells, the industry has volunteered to clean up 4.3% per year. At that rate, some experts warn cleanup could take well over 100 years. So Canadian taxpayers are footing some of that bill. The federal government pledged a billion dollars to target inactive wells, even though companies are responsible for them. That's on top of the hundreds of millions of dollars of loans already provided by the Alberta government. Do you feel like it's morally wrong to ask taxpayers to pay for any of this? Again, we never asked for it. That was given by governments and they had objectives around jobs. To a problem though that had to be solved, that had to be dealt with, right? That was created by 
oil companies. Yeah, absolutely. But we provide the safety net. And no, I don't have any problem of the province leveraging its super low interest rates, advancing repayable money to ensure kind of jobs outcomes. How can we guarantee that those loans will be fully repaid, considering that the oil downturn is so severe? It's a big sector. There are still a lot of very healthy participants in it. Are those big companies ready to put down a hundred times what they're put down right now if this gets worse? You know, again, I, it's, those, those aren't a problem yet. Will we get there while I'm still alive? I mean, to, to, to really get to a place that say, we've cleaned this up. You, you know, each year we drill some and we're gonna clean up some. You know, the long-term vitality of the sector, uh, you know, it, it will be the answer to that question. A sector that's been described as bleak heading into 2021. The Alberta government is waking up to the problem, putting in proactive steps to prevent this in the future, but it can't fully fix what's already happened. It recently introduced mandatory cleanup rules for companies. Still, no financial targets have been set. They've also brought in a financial fitness test to make sure smaller companies can cover their environmental mess. But there's still no long-term timelines for cleaning up almost 100,000 inactive wells, meaning they can potentially sit idle for decades. We wanted to speak with the Premier about the province's plan. His office refused and told us to speak to the Energy Minister, but her team never confirmed our request. So we tracked them down at an event at a heavy equipment depot. Why are we relentlessly championing the energy sector? Because uh, it is our single greatest source of employment, of opportunity, of wealth, of taxes. Premier Jason Kenney brushed us off. Molly Thomas from CTV's W5. I'm on a tour. <laughs> but we managed to get Sonia Savage, the energy minister. So I was just hoping I could at least ask a few questions. How come there's still no timelines um, for oil companies to clean up their mess? Isn't this a policy failure of consecutive governments then? I mean, have they it's, failed Albertans? You know, this is a problem that's, that's uh, felt right across North America as inactive inventories have grown as companies have uh, have uh, suffered. But other places had timelines, right, Minister? Well, like other, other places had that, so they, they protected themselves a little bit. Necessarily, we're, we're taking the most bold and the strongest action of any government in Alberta's history to tackle a problem that's been developing over decades. And uh, we'll, get, we'll get them cleaned up. It's going to yeah. take a little bit of time and a little bit of effort, but uh, we're doing the right thing. Do you think it'll be fixed in my generation, Minister? Will it be fixed in my generation or my kids' generation? Kids, kids, I mean, is there a timeline for that? But time is not on the side for the town of Kalmar, whose fate relies on their wells being cleaned up. So at the end of the day, we need the province to support us as municipalities and private landowners to ensure that the private industry is doing the right thing. Or for Mark Doran, whose cleaned up wells are still causing problems for his aging parents. It's our land. It's my parents. What am I supposed to do? Turn my back on them? What else do we do? An uncertain future for a province that gained so much from oil and gas, now with so much to lose. Two years ago, the Dorans took their case to a provincial tribunal that deals with land rights. They are still waiting for a decision. 